You're listening to Deliberate Living, a podcast that inspires, empowers, and encourages listeners to live life more authentically. My name is Holly Priestley, and I'm a full-time nomad and creator who has been living in my 1997 Ford van since January 1st of 2019. I travel the United States with my dog, learning how to live with more authenticity. I explore different ways people choose to ditch the prescribed life we've all been sold and live on their terms, finding freedom and happiness however they choose. Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of the Deliberate Living Podcast. I am your host, Holly Priestley. This week's guest is Josiah Rowe. He has been a a full-time nomad for a very long time, and he is a business owner who uh, runs a media company that also does van events all over North America so far, primarily. And I'm really excited to have him on the show because I think his story is... Uh, it's just something a little different, and he is vibrant and funny and smart, and I want to talk about his nomad journey as well as building a business uh, on the road as a nomad and now a business that employs other nomads and uh, just the possibilities that are um, in that space, how it works, how uh, how he manages everything, and all the the ups and downs that come with being a nomad, that come with being a business owner and a boss and a freelancer and all those things. So hello, Josiah. You are awesome. And uh, that was a really kind intro. Thank you. <laughs> well, you're welcome. <laughs> I'm really stoked that uh, that you're here and that you wanted to be a part of the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How do I manage the business? Like shout out to my uh, therapist and uh, for a great Xanax uh, <laughs> prescription. Hey, we are but, uh, <laughs> here for therapy. We support therapy. We support absolutely all, of the, all the things you need to help you live a more happy, content, fulfilling life. So, exactly. therapist Amen. and Xanax here for it. Perfect. <laughs> Not the sponsors of the show, but but we support them. <laughs> like to thank our sponsor today, Xanax. <laughs> so, That's for the great. people That's who good. the people who don't know you, don't know what you're up to, um, can you give a brief little like? bird's eye view of your nomad sure, sure. journey, how you got here, uh, where the business came from, that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I was working in the tech thing in San Francisco, and it was uh, over time stealing my soul. Mm. And uh, I had always had a little bit of a love affair with the idea of being in a vehicle and traveling around the world. And I had uh, gone through a breakup and gone to the island of Maui for Thanksgiving. And when I was looking at Airbnbs, somebody was writing Vanigans on there. And I got one. And what was a week trip turned into a month-long trip. <laughs> and I'm like, I could just roll up on beaches and stay. And then, yeah, I went to locals. And it was just a wonderful time. And then I was, like, hooked. And then it was just like, okay. And this is, like, pre the Sprinter Pro Master transit era that we live in now. Um, what like how, what year was this? It's like 2013, 2014. Okay. I was looking. I mean, yeah, I mean, you could kind of get sprinters and do some of There's a few of them out there. But like the van community tended to be all the weird OG old heads with their vanigans. And uh, I was just kind of always hunting for one. Made some friends who kind of had some. And then one had popped up on a website called the Samba. It's this sort of old website for that community. Um and it was green and i was like hell yeah i love that color i haven't seen one that looked anything like that and uh jumped in a car drove from uh san francisco to colorado and of course bought it, was it. In colorado <laughs> of course it was in colorado yeah, yeah it was colorado springs a couple from maine had just finished doing their year-long bouncing around in it and uh yeah then i kind of was just part-timing i was splitting my time between sf and the front range uh, went through another breakup, and at that break, I was like, you know what? I think I'm just gonna do this thing uh, close to full time ish. Um, uh, yeah, and it's just been. I just I also didn't like flying because I felt like I was missing all this really cool stuff. Yeah, and I, you know, it's a big, beautiful world, and I want to see as much of it as I can before it gets dark. And so uh, I would bounce back and forth between San Francisco and the Front Range, just taking different routes across, staying the hell off the interstate. And uh, kind of got hooked. I wouldn't call myself a full-time van lifer, uh, just because I started out part-time, splitting places. Um, I'll like go to other country now and work remotely. But um, as I got more and more, uh, yeah, just disillusioned with slash jaded with 
the tech culture and also working for other people, I had uh, folks start to buy my photographs and ask me to come take their photographs. And I was like, hmm, I wonder if I can get paid to do this. <laughs> and uh, I started dabbling with, I'm like, well, who has the money to pay me to do these things? Um, I've always uh, you know, kind of had a little bit of a head for the sales thing and started doing a lot of work for what are called like tourism boards or destination marketing organizations like your Visit California or your Travel Oregon. Uh, the Colorado Department of Tourism, um, and uh, figured out how to kind of pitch to them. Uh, started a production company that did photo and video production. Uh, after a year or two of doing that, I wanted to be able to do the kind of deeper, more immersive storytelling that kind of fit with the way I even like to travel. Um, like I like to go to a place like Bisbee, where you're at, which is how I even came across it in the first place, and actually spend a a month or two there to kind of get a sense of the people and the rhythm of it and you know what what mornings are like and what coffee shops they go to and what the different kind of dive bars are and the restaurant <laughs> i just i like that what's this what's the stuff that gives a place its feel and its soul and the people that make it up and their routines and traditions and things like that and so uh i was sitting there in seattle at a friend's house and like maybe I should just start my own magazine uh, that kind of does it because I couldn't really find anything that quite did it like that. And I was reading a lot of Proust at the time and you know, the remembrance of things past. And I was like, well, what if it's about like uh, uh, those experiences where you lose track of time and it was the aha moment. And so then it was the Journal of Lost Time it was the name we came up with. And then uh, I went to South America and the pandemic hit, <laughs> which was a trip. <laughs> and I got trapped in a cabin in the Andes in Chile for seven months because I had a rental car from Argentina. And the Chilean government wouldn't let me leave the country uh, and abandon a rental car there in a little town called Futale Fu. It's a weird name, but uh, yeah, and I fell in love with it and I bought, since bought land there. Um, and uh, while I was doing that, it kind of gave me a lot of time to really focus on building the publication and figuring out how we wanted to talk about it and position it and to also approach clients that I currently had and also down the road and how to pitch them on the kind of projects that we wanted to do. And uh, since then, it's been great. We've basically doubled size and revenue uh, year after year. And like anything that is a bootstrapped, no venture mm -hmm. capital, small business affair, it is a scrappy uh, two steps forward, three steps back kind of affair. Um, but I really, really love it. And it's really rewarding. And um, most of the time, I feel like it has soul. And um, we keep getting better and better and finding uh, more and more talented folks that are better things that than I am, uh, that's for sure. Certain videographers and editors and illustrators and things like that. And then uh, we were doing a project down uh, in Baja, California. It was um, kind of came after one winter after I was in my van. I was like, hey, I'm just going to go to Baja. It's down there. As a California, you kind of hear about it. It's this mythical place mm -hmm. to the south. Yep. And I'm like, what's south of Tijuana? And I looked at a map and at this point, I'd been in the van for a while and kind of gotten a sense of the stay the hell off the interstates, uh, go to the blank spots on the map. There's always roads there, something really awesome. Keep it in terrain view as often as possible. Hell so yeah. I knew there had to be cool stuff down there. Yeah. And then I uh, went down there, loved it. The next year, um, was doing, a, I didn't realize that there were other overlanders and a few van lifers at the time down there. And so the second year I went, I was like, well, what if we all just meet on this beach that I found outside of the town called La Paz? Because all the beaches down there are public for the most part. And that first year, 60 vans showed up. And then Whoa. The next year, yeah, yeah. Because it was all word of mouth, too. That's a lot and of then, vans, uh, for, especially for word of mouth. Goddamn. Yeah, it's crazy. Well, I mean, that's like Baja's like a small town. It's yes. There's really one road north or south. And it's great because you just meet people along the way and you're leapfrogging each other and then you run into them at, you know, the town square Loretto later on or in 
at a certain <laughs> beach and you're chatting it up and you travel together for a little bit and then you part ways and you meet them back up. It's great. It's wonderful that way. It's van life perfection, in my opinion. Yeah. And then it got bigger and bigger. And then uh, I think we'll have a thousand at that event this year, vehicles that show up this February. Oh, and then, sure. yeah, it's a bit of a thing at this point. Um and it's beautiful because everybody shows up at it on a high after having taken the best road trip of their lives. And they're reuniting with friends they'd made, made you know, two weeks earlier at such and such beach where they'd shared an amazing sunrise and sunset. Or So everybody's just sort of aglow with all of the joy of exploration that kind of comes with this particular lifestyle we've chosen. And so it's got a really good energy. And sort of doing that, it made me kind of realize that there was a space in our community for events that were rooted in place and kind of rooted in community. Mm -hmm. And I mean, because Descend on Ben's there and they're the godfather and it's wonderful. Now they got Descend on La Sierra, which was a great event. And I love those guys because they're all Vanagon dudes originally. So I kind of know them from that community and I had hung out with it before it kind of became the big van life mm -hmm. event that it is now. Um, and I was like, well, what are all my favorite places to van life, of which Bisbee was one of them. Hell yeah. Uh, <laughs> and Lander, Lander, Wyoming was another one. Mm. Uh, Ventura was another one, but we've canceled that one. And the, the baddest women on our team have turned it into a solo female van life event in March called oh, A Rome cool. of Our Own. Nice. Yeah, pretty stoked. Yeah, yeah. We don't have the identity done. Hopefully done in a couple of days. Tori's working on it. Um but yeah, we'll kind of announce that in the next few weeks. And then uh, there's one on the Oregon coast in July, which is just delightful. Um, and then the final one is in a place called Rama, New Mexico, called Moon Landing. And that's in October. Uh, yeah, and they're they're great. They're real kind of community-oriented events. We definitely encourage people who come to like do something interactive, show off their artwork, do the breathwork classes, yoga, leather working. <laughs> There's a couple mobile tattoo parlors and brands are all there too, but we kind of make it, it's not an expo. They've got to kind of do something interactive. So, you know, Mountain House is making breakfast every morning and Flare Space did a spacesuit dance competition at the last one. And so there's kind of a real focus on uh, interactivity and participation and not just uh, the commerce side of things, because I think if you do good interactivity and good participation, the commerce will follow. Um, yeah. and yeah, it's been really good. And so now we're just kind of real focused on the team is real focused on the 2023 series. At least the events team is real focused on that. And then the production team, we're really focused on getting all of our production projects set up for 2023. And, uh, yeah, I kind of play air traffic controller slash midwife to the whole thing. <laughs> and I, I put out fires, a lot of fire putting out how many people do you employ right now? And and from a business perspective, are they employees or are they freelancers? Yeah, so I've got a couple a of, yeah, it's a mix. And it's almost, I mean, the majority are definitely freelancers. Um, but like four full-time, like W2'd mm -hmm. up. And then there's, um, I don't know, I would say full-time. I mean, they're contractors, but um probably another nine on top of that. And then the freelance network kind of goes from there. Yeah, I guess it's like, you ever see those pictures of like, uh, where they try to show the effects of gravity where you've got like the black hole in the middle, and the closer it gets and it kind of sinks down. It's a little bit like that as you get like farther <laughs> out. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's, a, there's a pretty good network, you know, and because it's like a production project we've got to do and southwest in a few weeks it's hey who's available you know like yeah um, yeah nate yeah and, nate and katie and so and so they're off on this project over here and yeah the closer are you in it's it's almost like you kind of get first dibs on work as it comes in but yeah i think that makes a lot of a lot of sense yeah i mean a lot of the contractor stuff is a necessity of just being a small business and getting started that you know you're not we don't have a bunch of VC funding to just go out and necessarily hire people full time. So when I do hire somebody, it tends to be on a mission critical component of the machine that um, is tied in some way to consistent revenue. So, right. so if when that makes sense. to back up a, a little bit, um, mm -hmm. when you started part time vanning, 
you were working mm -hmm. in tech in San Francisco and then mm -hmm. suddenly you have a big production company that employs four people full time and has a network of freelancers. At what point did you leave your tech job? Did you leave your tech job? Um, and what was that transition like? What was that mental uh, mm -hmm. math and, and the puzzling together? How did that go? So that's a good question. Um, it it wasn't a neat, clean break. Um, I transitioned out of being a full-time W-2 employee to move to the freelancer sort of mm -hmm. thing, which very common. because of, mm -hmm, and because of my seniority and experience as a product designer, which is what I did and at that point, I was in design management. It was a little bit easier to do and I had a network where um if somebody had a fire they needed to put out from a design standpoint and they needed somebody to like who could because you know I used to I did a lot of programming so I know how to work with the engineers and et cetera, et cetera. So I was fortunate because of the experience I had and the network I had to be able to plug in in a way that kind of worked for the freelancer thing where I didn't even necessarily have to take like six month contracts. Mm -hmm. So I could be, I, I, you know, I'd pick up a six month one here or a six week one here. And then I, as I was starting to do more production work, photo, video, it would be, okay, well, I've got a week shoot in Laguna Beach for a brand, a DMO. I'm um, kind of, I was kind of had some flexibility there. So um, I was kind of afforded that, you know, the privilege of getting to kind of hybridize my career as I, was turning down the the product design side of things and turning up the the content production side of things. And it was nice for a while. I was taking those kind of first tentative steps into doing the full-time content production side of things that I felt like I had a little bit of a safety. And even when the pandemic hit, I had this moment of second guessing myself of like, oh well, well shit, I need to get back into the where you're safe with the product yeah. design world and I, and I feel you know I even like did an interview but even on the interview it was like I was just annoyed at it I was like why am I talking I'm better <laughs> at my job I'm better at that guy's job who I'm talking to and he's asking the wrong questions I'm not a very good employee <laughs> I'm just I'm not a very patient person so um so it kind of took a little bit of time uh but the pandemic in a real way just sort of like forced me to to really think about the business and then coming back because you know you're drawn down on your savings and seeing the the wall of that and it was like all right time to go to work making this happen and then it's just a lot of a lot of emailing and a lot of calls and a especially lot of if you're not in this country and like you you can't yeah. necessarily meet up with people and like not that anyone should have been meeting up with anyone mm -hmm. because social distancing, but yeah, I'm sure that that made it like better in some ways and worse in some ways. I would say that like, I definitely view for the way that I wanted to live my life as a full-time nomad where I believed in the idea that I could have a fully nomadic and remote team. Mm -hmm. Like I, I didn't, I didn't, I never bought the idea that for somebody to be productive and competent, they had to be sitting in a specific room somewhere. That feels weird yeah. to me. You're either the kind of person who works hard and has your shit together or you're not. And don't get me wrong, the way in which everyone does that is different. They need different contexts and different settings. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of my job as a manager to figure out what motivates certain people and how to make them feel fulfilled and supported so they can be productive in a way that they feel happy yeah because um, people work better when they feel appreciated exactly exactly so the pandemic though definitely um made it took what was a hopeful thing for what i wanted for my life and for the business and it became a harsh reality for the world that we are now all working from home wherever that might be mm -hmm. and it was really 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 nice because I was able to, in a lot of ways, let go of like, well, where should I be geographically located to be able to go out to lunch mm. with somebody? You know, that, that kind of like never have lunch alone sales idea where yeah. you always want to, <laughs> like, that's just out the window. Like, we don't worry yeah. about that anymore. Like, no. 
you know, like I just had a, a really important call with a partner for the 2023 series. And it's always the first thing you do is everyone laughs at how messy your hair is anymore. Like it just sort of like wound all of that pressure that we put on ourselves and that in-person stuff. It, it, and that made it easier for, I think, my business to kind of do what it does, which is a lot of emails and Zoom calls, not Zoom, but Google Hangouts calls. Yeah, um, I think it really helped people kind of see that they can work better, more fulfilled, cheaper, you know, yeah. from like other places, you know, from a, from an employee standpoint being like, Oh, I don't, I actually, I'm happier working from home where my dogs can lay on the bed behind me, you know, or yeah. um, from a, you know, from a boss's perspective, like, Oh, we don't actually need the overhead of having an office and people are actually like, more effective and happier like not mm -hmm. I don't know it just seemed like such a duh thing to me but then the pandemic made it more of a thing that people understand and now that you know we're kind of in that image yeah. where people are starting to go back to work if you want to go if you're more productive out of your house which mm -hmm. I understand mm -hmm. a lot of people are especially if you have like a lot of distractions at home or it's just your personality like go but a lot of people yeah. don't need that I I hate commuting I don't care if it's getting to commute. Like I loved taking the bus and the train in San Francisco. I don't, it's just a romantic thing with the whole experience. And I, okay. I had a lot of guilt about leaving the high dollar privilege that I had in the tech thing in SF to go do what I was doing now. Because mm -hmm. I didn't, I I didn't, I didn't go to a Stanford or a Ivy League school or a big name school. I came from a tiny ass small town and all that stuff. So for me to like get to San Francisco was the goal, and I didn't make it there till my early thirties. I was just busting ass in small town, et cetera, to like get yeah. to the get to you know the promised land, make of it big, tech and SF. yeah, yeah, you know, to work at Facebook and all that sort of bunch of stuff, and work with the Googles and the rest. So, um. But then to decide that, oh, I got here, I'm not happy doing it. Mm. To leave it means not having what was in hindsight, and at the time even felt that way, like silly amounts of money and benefits. And here's an Uber card, so you can just take an Uber. To, what? Like, <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> like, crazy stuff. Like, just the, the perks they dump on your head. Um, and then to walk away from all that to effectively make nothing. And try to start from the ground up. Uh, I felt, you know, Protestant internalized capitalism, <laughs> you know, and also just you know the anxiety that comes with starting a new thing. But I don't know. I get a real rush over the a certain kind of anxiety, a certain kind of fear. Mm -hmm. Man, am I gonna well, am certain... I gonna pull this off? I like that feeling. Yeah, the, a I'm certain a, amount of stress, a certain level of stress makes you better at what you do. If you're yeah. already good at what you're doing. <laughs> yeah well there's but well, i think there's even like a there's a pleasure in there's a pleasure in testing and determining what it is you're good at like am yeah. i gonna be good enough to pull this off <laughs> i'm gonna try it and like i don't know maybe it was i got good at i'm not being okay with but i got good at acknowledging that I'm not perfect and sometimes I'm going to make mistakes. That's a little bit of a religious upbringing I had, mm -hmm. you know, cause you're told you suck all the time. You kind of yep. screw you like, but maybe that's also why I work as hard as I do to prove that I don't suck, but um, getting a little deep. Um, but yeah, I think there's a real joy. There's a real joy to be found in like being bold and risking it a bit. And most of the good things in my life have come on the other side of, the thing that I was afraid of so yeah I was definitely afraid to do it but I mean I I love it I wouldn't I love what I do and the people I get to work with and the community we get to be a part of of other folks who did a brave thing to walk away from a traditional corporate suburban nine-to-five thing to go out on the road and see a bit of the world yeah I think it's a very cool. romanticized concept 
you know, like I walked away from my corporate job and did these things and it worked out great for me, but also like, it's not rainbows and unicorns, you know, like the van life thing, like hashtag van life, hashtag blessed. Like it's not great. All Even a little bit. Like it fucking sucks a lot of the time, you know, and there's so much stress associated with like, I have to pay mm-hmm. my bills. How, how am I getting health insurance now? Like all those perks and benefits that, that you walked away from. Yeah, 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 I think yeah. that's that's like a real thing for so many people who are like, I made it to where I thought I wanted to be to the promised mm-hmm. land of, you know, whatever that looks like for me. And now I'm here and like, what else? What mm-hmm. else is there? <laughs> and so I think that like approaching that and and moving through that is something that, you know, a lot of people want to do, but they don't know how to do. And so that's why I like sharing these stories is so important because it's, well, you know, there's uh, yeah, no I agree with you. roadmap. There's just a, this is how I did it. Yeah. Worked for me. Take it or leave we're it. We're all winging it. We're all yeah. winging it. Nobody, Nobody knows, knows anything. Knows. Nobody knows what they're <laughs> doing. It. Nobody knows what they're doing. Well, I think, I think part of the reason why I found, and I actually, why I like doing the events is, I mean, I really do think humans are all we got. And kindness loves the best of it and like what i've really enjoyed about getting to facilitate the events is that you you get to see the community that kind of happens there like you give people a way to get together Mm -hmm. um it's been really fun to kind of watch talking with some friends about this it's been kind of fun to watch the uh partnering up side of that where folks came to an event back in March and then they show up at one in October and they like had met at that event and now they're like dating it together. Yeah. And how people talk about how much nicer it is than doing like the online thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and the absolute misery that that is. Um, <laughs> but I, but like that community thing, the like, like the, the institutions especially in our like automobile suburbanized non-urban poorly planned country Mm -hmm. um we don't have the neighborhood bar that we go into um especially with the pandemic um robert putnam wrote this book bowling alone i don't know if you heard about it but how uh there was the decline in uh bowling alleys and bowling leagues uh, and people just weren't getting together in the same way they don't have to drive farther to see people there isn't like the park you can walk down the street to a lot of our neighborhoods don't even have sidewalks and so i think that like that uh i don't know if that is i'll, I'll call it a sickness i think it's like a, a cultural sickness it's because of the way we've like whether or with awareness or not or realizing what they were doing just with the way that like our our culture and our by culture, I just mean like even the way like our neighborhoods are planned. Mm-hmm. Uh, that lack of community and where you mash up people and they interact with each other, where there's uh, socioeconomic, cultural, ethnic, every kind of diversity, like that all going away has been, I think, a bad thing. And I like that it feels like in a small, tiny way that these events are addressing at least that sickness and the way it's expressed in the nomadic community it's like hey look we need we need ways to get together like and like i've talked with a friend and like she's starting a solo female band like that and she you know she was like well what do we do if there's two of them like i really don't think you can have too many (laughs) i just don't think what do you mean like we don't want to get together with friends every weekend like I, yeah, that's not. I don't think that's not a thing. Yeah, I don't, I don't think yeah. it's a problem. Just like you know, like I don't. I'm not really worried about that just yet. So, um, yeah. Now I don't do more than the six that we have because it's a lot to do six and it's a lot of work. And I've, yeah, it's more than just so much. It's more than just that. Like word of mouth. Like, hey, is anybody else in the area? Like, let's have a potluck. That's one of the best things about the van community mm-hmm. in my in my experience was you know once you got past the initial like I don't know discomfort and fear of it and you know solo females travel totally different than solo males do sure or couples yep. um but eventually there's kind of like an expectation of like well we're camping together mm-hmm. so we're gonna eat together you know we're camping together yep. so we're gonna hang out or like we're in the same area we might as well say hi you mm-hmm. know and there's like 
especially in subcultures like the van community or nomading um, in other ways and entrepreneurs and stuff. I mean, there's anytime Mm -hmm. you're part of like a subculture, there's like a, hey, we have this in common. You know, we have something Mm -hmm. already pretty significant. Like we're making a lifestyle choice. You know, this is Mm -hmm. how like parents find each other. It's like, oh, I had to take my kid to the park and then I met another parent and then we can talk about parenting, you know, like vanning. It's like, Mm -hmm. I had to take my van to the mechanic and I met this other vanner and oh my Mm -hmm. God, we lamented about oil change or whatever, you know, like bathrooms. You always got to talk about the bathroom. You meet somebody new and it's like, hey, how do you shit? Like we got (laughs) to talk about things like that in the van community. And I think that, you know, that's a thing. So you like, you're mashing up different people from the same subculture so like maybe they don't know each other maybe they do have different histories and backgrounds but they come together and they have mm -hmm. one really big thing in common and therefore y'all are probably gonna get along you know not i i i have liked i have enjoyed at our events that there has been some I mean, obviously, you can always be more, but socioeconomic diversity. Yeah. Like, you do have folks in half million dollar, you know, beautiful storyteller rigs. And then you got folks mm-hmm. rocking the like DIY Chevy Astro van from 87 yeah. or something like that. <laughs> you know, like, and I, and a lot of folks are like, oh man, you got all this attention. You should, you could charge 200 bucks for a ticket. And I'm like, I felt fucking terrible charging 80 for the moon landing. That's just how much everything ended up costing to do it. Like, I just, like, I just like trying to keep it as, because, you know, the only thing you got to pay for when you walk into the neighborhood bar to get a beer is the beer. Yeah. Like, you know, you know, like I would love to The barrier to entry is a little lower. I like to keep it low. Like, I think, I, I think, I don't know, and maybe it's my naivete, but I like to feel like good stuff can come together through mashing that up. And I do know that I've been able to find some of the best and most talented people that I get to work with now on the more commercial side of what I do because of the events. Like I found other producers and other badass videographers and other good illustrators and folks like that because those tend to be creative folks anyway, slightly brave, Mm -hmm. um, shoot together in a sense where they're like... they figured out how to solve this weird thing of living in a van and that just (laughs) means that i can trust them to be self-reliant when i'm not there and when you're trying to scale and grow a business that's kind of everything is you've got to be able to do stuff where i'm personally not in the room and yeah yeah i never really thought about it until now the idea of the events is like a a recruiting tool (laughs) yeah, like a little, really they're a little bit networking. They're a little bit recruiting. Yeah, little I didn't bit. really, yeah, but it is, it is, it is. I didn't really think about that. Yeah, yeah, but that's been good. And I hope it's been that way for other folks in the businesses too. When I think about it, maybe we should start a job fair activity. Yeah, because we're thinking a lot about programming <laughs> for next year. That's uh, kind of interesting. Uh, yeah, <laughs> feels a little weird. <laughs> Suddenly your van neighbor is a potential employer. I don't know, it brings a weird energy. Yeah, I think that would well, be a little, that would put a lot of pressure on something you're not trying to put a lot of pressure on. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> somebody else can do it. I'm not going to worry about it. But <laughs> yeah, somebody else out there can create like van gatherings that are specifically about jobs like the big tent in Quartzsite or yeah, something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So good. Yeah. So cool. um, when you, you you've mentioned a number of times that you were raised in a religious family um Mm -hmm. and i'm curious how your family took your career change and your lifestyle change at the beginning were they like okay cool josiah we love you we trust you we support you um or were they more like the fuck are you doing and then now that you've been doing it for so long like what is did you have support from the beginning or what was that like Hey, mom, what'd you think when I uh, decided I was doing van life and started traveling a lot more? Do you think I was crazy? My dad says I'm certifiably crazy. And my mom says, no, she thinks it's great. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. Yeah. Yeah. She's if my vehicle would break down as much as it did. Um, well, you did well, get yourself I mean, a van again. That was your fault. You shouldn't have done that. Yeah, true, 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 true. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to remember. Um, I mean, I'm certain that there's always, like, be responsible about your career stuff. I think I remember my dad saying something to that effect, but, like, 
uh they're yeah they're generally really so i mean they've lived somewhat non-traditional lives in their own respect particularly growing up even though they're mm. very much in a home ish but um no i mean they're travelers themselves they just got back from a couple of weeks in cyprus and greece so um they're definitely into the travel thing so i didn't experience um from them any sort of like negativity around that decision other than maybe a raised eyebrow from from my dad about you know walking away from you know really high paying jobs where i would kick him money and potentially start going the other way around <laughs> like that. um were there other people yeah, in your life who weren't supportive yeah so so okay. that's where it got like yeah, yeah so like i so i get to san francisco and mm-hmm. you know, I'd, I'd left a past life behind from back east and you know i made all these new friends and the folks in tech and the rest and that's just the life in the community and um i know there's even now, I mean, they, it's it's definitely who I am, but like, I, it's, our lives are so completely different. You know, like, you know, it was I went from you know, eating out every night at crazy restaurants and doing all that sort of stuff, and that whole Bay Area thing. Mm-hmm. Even you know, and you know, they also are now like married and having kids. And, you know, they all moved to East Bay and got homes over there, and there's a sort of like this trajectory you kind of go through in that sort of world if you stay and don't leave. And so, there's definitely like raise eyebrows but they're mostly just kind of like in awe of it like aspirationally because of I mean because of what I do I get to like make sometimes I think beautiful content so they kind of see that stuff and I think they're definitely a little confused by it and they find it wild but it's it's almost just sort of like an enigma to them Mm. and I definitely noticed from some folks that I talked to and, and from like a past life back east where it's still, it's very much like they all got married right after college and started making babies at like 23. My life doesn't, yeah, like, you know, got some of my kids are in college now. Yeah, it's a trip. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, that, that, that was, you know, that's, that's Jesus land. Um, so, like, they're <laughs> definitely like, my life makes no sense. Them at all. He went, why do you went to San Francisco? He worked where and where. And now he's, is he in a van? Like, is, where is he? Like, I, I occasionally get messages like that where usually the first message when I get from somebody from our, either of those past-ish lives is always like, where the hell are you now? Or like, yep. where are you? Because there's just no, they, they don't know how to, it's just so different from the rhythm of it. I'm so far removed from it now that I just, the idea of having to be anywhere on anybody's timeline mm. that I haven't like committed to is so alien to how I think about it. And I'm yeah. even get to the point where, like, I don't even like planning more than like a couple of days ahead of time. That just mm-hmm. feels like I'm just going to get let down. <laughs> like <it's, laughs> Something's like going to change. Like, yeah. yeah, it's like you you want to make God laugh, you make a plan. It's generally yeah. how I think about it. Oh my it, gosh. So, <laughs> yeah. So I, uh, but I mean, you know, I trajectories is what I call it. Where I'm aiming, but I leave all the space in the world to to adjust it. So um, yeah. No, they didn't. They didn't give much grief, and yeah, definitely, there are definitely folks I miss from that world because I love them and they were dear friends. And I'm always like, and it does happen when somebody's like, "Hey, what are you doing?" I'm like, "Do you want to hang out?" I'm like, "Yeah, fly into Phoenix. I'll pick you up, and let's, you know, head up to the North Rim or something like that." And they're like, "What?" I'm like, "Just trust me. Just just be do at the it. airport on this. Just, just do just, it. Just shut up and do it. I'll pick you up." And then they end up having a great time. You know, yeah, yeah. I think that's awesome. It's de- it's definitely made like. It's fun when you, I don't know if you've had this experience, but you know, like quasi romantic interests slash entanglements where they're still in like, I don't know what to call it, the deep, the normies. Yeah, the normies, um, the muggles. <laughs> the, the muggles, the normies, where like, I'll be like, okay, you know, they're all like very excited about it, but you know, in like two days, whether or not they're built for it real quick. Like, okay, oh my God, person, yes. You know immediately whether or not they can. Whether they, they can hang. hang. Like, if you need a shower every day, like, I'm not your girl. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's out. Sorry. <laughs> That's not going to happen. I have, a, <laughs> Just I have a house now with, like, running water, and I still am, like, I, I still do I so many things the, the van way. Like, I have mm-hmm. a cute little stove. It's 
It's from 1938. It's fucking adorable. I need to like light it mm-hmm. with a lighter and stuff. It's got four burners. They all work. I still only use one at a time. You yeah. know, like it's just yeah. like old like holdover van <laughs> patterns. That's stuff. totally right. And it's just that's life now. <laughs> this is a weird one to share. Like I still will go outside to pee. <laughs> I'm sure your parents are really hearing that. <laughs> uh, I mean, like, well, the thing is, is like I get up in the morning and I go to walk the dog. Yeah, and let the dog out. Mine's so you go to let the dog out, and it, I wasn't even thinking about it. I realized I did it this morning. I was like, "What am I?" Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, there's tons of space. There's nobody around, but like, yeah, it's just one of those things. Same thing when I shower every day. Fan life broke me of the twice a day shower thing. Oh my goodness. You know, like, yeah. yeah, I know. I was never in a twice a day rhythm, but yeah. Well, definitely. you know, you get up. You, yeah, you, yeah. You go. You know. <laughs> yeah, you work out. You shower. Come home after yeah. work. You can go out on a date. Might as well do another. I don't know. Yeah, sometimes twice a day. <laughs> Ridiculous. So, uh, you've been doing this for quite a few years now. Seven yeah, I'm like years. five, six years. I feel like I yeah. feel like I'm not quite OG, OG like a lot of the folks that were, you know, like Kit and Jr. You know, Idol Theory, some of the early, early Van Life cats, mm-hmm. Corey. You know, where's my office now? And a few others. But yeah, they were before me. But yeah, it's definitely, I remember going to like the first Van Life Diaries meetup, which I still talk, you know, Kathleen doesn't do it anymore. Hopefully she's going to come back into the scene. But uh, yeah, some of those like first Van Life Diaries meetup, first band gathering on the first film came out. Yeah, I just remember all those cats at those things. And now it's, it's beautiful that more folks have gotten into it. Yeah, I I, I think, think it's, it's fantastic that so many more people have gotten into it. I think, you know, like there's some some communities that are kind of gatekeepy like oh you can't you can't be a vanner or like you're not a you're not a real van lifer if you only do it on the weekends or you're not a real van lifer if you're not a real like shut up you literally shut the like, fuck you, up yeah it doesn't matter just, you don't have to do that i think you're you're more like welcoming uh, approach and just like accepting and community oriented approaches the way it should be the sh- the, like i've been doing this for 6 years now jeez 7 years and like, mm-hmm. I've been taking photos of my man in beautiful places, and I will still get blown up by assholes as being some kind of like Instagrammy influencer. I'm like, dude, I've been just doing this for forever. Like, you never see a picture of me on my thing. I'm not talking into my camera. I don't have yeah. a personal. You YouTube don't have channel. any bikini shots. No, I do not give a crap about any of that stuff. I do it because <laughs> I like the craft of that. You know, like, I enjoy yeah. making things. It had nothing to do with. It ain't about me. It's about yeah. Anyway. Yeah. yeah, people are, but you know, it's humans. We're not very nice to each other as a general rule. Pretty I think cool. that's usually a fear based response. If you're not being sure. nice to somebody else, you're afraid of something, right? You're afraid yeah. Maybe yeah. they have something that you don't have. And if they have it, that means you yeah. can't yeah. have it, which is backwards. Yeah. 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 But I, you know, I think yeah. a lot of it is is fear based. And so I try to yeah. have a lot of empathy for people like that. But yeah, you're right. Um, We've talked a little bit about your uh, your event series for 2023. Mm-hmm. Do you have any other like personal goals for the future, whether it's this year or or beyond? Do you have any idea what, I mean, I, you just said that you only plan a couple of days in advance, but you like to have trajectories. <laughs> Do you have any, sure, sure. any of those you feel like sharing? So <laughs> one of the ones we're working on right now is trying to get the print edition of the Journal of Lost Time ready to go by. February is kind of the goal. So there's a lot that has to happen with that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, the content's all there. The designer's there. The editor's there. There's just some stuff that needs to happen. And yeah, there's, there's house keys. So that's uh, an important one to do. It'll be quarterly. Want to make something that people feel guilty recycling. Your kids, (laughs) no, that you're like your kids find on a shelf and get inspired to go see it. I don't know. There's some ways like, I almost feel like it's in the same way that I love reading a Nat Geo from like the 70s. Oh my God. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's like windows back in time. Yeah. And I almost like, I want to make something that's trying to like capture, you know, that moment in time because you know, climate change and everything. And mm-hmm. yeah, it feels a little bit like that. So that's, that's okay. definitely one that I'm focused on. And then, um, I bought land in Chile and Patagonia and Fudale Fu. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it's <laughs> when I make a little money, put it into that. Um, uh, yeah, 
done too many projects, but I um, want to <laughs> get the cabins in my house and my quincho built. Um, I will rent the cabins out, but you have to rent them for at least a month and stay for a while. And it's all give people that same wooden. experience. Exactly. I Settling mean, in. <laughs> I don't know if it's the most beautiful place in the world, but uh, when I'm there, I no longer wonder where is the most beautiful place in the world. Mm. There's a 150 foot waterfall off the sheer granite face and looks over this old glacial car valley. It's stupid. I'll read it. And I'm calling the whole thing La Biblioteca, which I realize is such, I have the website, Donde Esta La Biblioteca, but um, nobody gets it in Chile. It's great. Like, why are you calling it the library? It makes no sense. Like, just don't worry about <laughs> it. The gringos will get it. But uh, yeah, so that that then I'm chipping away. That's going to take a long project. Probably like five years off from being ready. But Ooh, I'm either... going to come. That sounds great. Oh, you're I'm into it. it. <laughs> yeah, I'll either die there or San Francisco. Um, it's pretty great. Uh, those are the really only the only real part. You know, exercise more. <laughs> but that's always a. <laughs> but now that's really um yeah, it's only the real real personal things like I. I want to see the events grow in richness and depth. Um, I like seeing uh, more and more people from the community kind of bringing their their thing to it. Um, Baja tends to be really hilarious. Like folks organize volleyball tournaments and one world races and a bazillion happy hours. Um, call them mini brain great. names. I want to see more and more of those at the events where the creativity is coming out and seeing where and how they if they take on a life and a culture of their own what are, what are the dates of baja again just you know just for the audience who may be uh, just for the for this. <laughs> when it who are listening to this when it comes out and not like six months or three years later <laughs> yeah so uh it's always usually the first week of february okay all right so, um, first week of february. and you know it's, there's no gates or anything like that you come and go as you please so it's like you get there early you get there late doesn't matter it's just there's always a bunch of folks there and the nice thing about it is that time of year, um, there's only two restaurants on the beach and they love us because that time of year, it's normally dead. It's cold down there because it's mm. in the 70s, whereas we're all like, hell yeah, I jump have. in the water. Exactly. Yeah. So. Yeah, Vanderbilt <laughs> in the 70s, that's fucking great. It's, I'm going swimming. Hell yeah, bring it on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, the locals don't go there. Like big puffy coats and the rest, it cracks me up. Um, so uh, yeah, there's just always a ton of to the banners there especially it's just gonna be a weird Baja just because everyone will have Starlink for the first time and so yes people might actually be was... able to like work and hang out and like that yeah. that sounds that sounds legit uh, yep. if somebody is listening to this or watching the YouTube version and they are kind of where you were oh shit I'm on video eight, nine years ago and they're uh in in corporate land and they're dissatisfied with it what would you say to them uh the biggest thing is like you have more negotiating power with your bosses than you think you do like oh that's a good one literally just tell them that you're going to start working remotely mm -hmm. that's it mm -hmm. yeah don't ask yeah. don't be like hey what do you think if more like i'm gonna yeah. do this so like yeah I'm, yeah, I'm just like gonna problem. do this yeah yeah just i mean now i realize not everyone can but and i realize i'm saying this from a place of enormous privilege but i've also just seen a lot of folks do it from that don't look like me and so i really just think that you have a lot more flex than you might think you have with your bosses because what you're telling them is like if you're a boss and you're good at your job or if your boss you've got an employee who's good at their job and they're like hey i'm going to do those things like like i now either have to deal with the pain and awkwardness of firing that person and hiring someone to replace them and letting that become my life for the next three to six months or i just go oh yeah holly's good at her job um she's not going to be here all the time and that's okay I don't sit in meetings with her all the damn time anyway. And she can jump on a hangout. You know, like that's what's more painful. It's literally like a boss is just doing that cost benefits analysis yeah. of it. It's and if you're a better investment for them to keep the person that they already have, that they know is good at the job, that they know. You 100%. Know, all things. And also if they're like not down with that, maybe it's 
not the healthiest workspace for you and you need to go find a boss who like cares yep. about your mental health a little more yeah but that's yeah. just me like i have i have issues uh with them i'm also not a great employee <laughs> i work my butt You're off gonna... not that i'm lazy it's just that i like doing things my way and, and that sort of thing so really it really <laughs> works for me oh <laughs> uh, it's great it's great yeah it's perfect uh yeah just i really just sort of like yeah and it takes a lot of self-confidence and belief in yourself and it's all going to work out and yeah, I think we're all a lot it's up more. and down. Like there's a lot of uh self-doubt and concern and stress and things change and but there's a lot of resources mm-hmm. for that now too. Um, you mm-hmm. know, how to how to get internet in a van. When I first started in the van, like Starlink wasn't a thing, you know. So my first eight or nine months in the van, I was reliant on coffee shops and libraries. And oh, then gosh. It was, it was really challenging, especially because I had a dog in the van. And so like in the summertime, it was like, I can go to work. If I can find a shady spot to park the van, I can work for this many hours. And then I have to take her to a park, you know, like I, it was, it was a certain amount of puzzle piecing to make it work. And then I got a, a a Verizon hotspot. And then I was like, Mm -hmm. oh, I can work from anywhere. There's Verizon service. And then a few months Mm -hmm. after that, I got a WeBoost. So then I could like Mm -hmm. get a signal booster and I could still work from almost anywhere there was Verizon service and you know just like there are ways you can do that and now there's fucking Starlink and you can work from anywhere there's not trees like shit that's amazing I I only got to do it I only got to do it for like a month just with the vehicle but man it felt like freedom yes it was so crazy like it was like no more because my whole life was just built around the anxiety of cell service to yep. be able to work yep. i work same, same. you know like mm-hmm. i it's like it's and i'm always on i'm never not yep. working so i yep. would put in a 12 hour day on a sunday yep and like suddenly that was gone it felt like a freedom i haven't felt since the first time i got in the van like and you could just exhale trip. and be like this is yeah, fine I was like i just i can't wait for bob like i i, I want my van back to feel that again and like, I literally don't care. The limiting factor now is just making sure my batteries are topped off. Yeah. And I'm like, how do I get, how do I get more solar? How do, I, yeah. how do I get more fuel? Like it's, it's cool to have a different problem than cell service now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I was going to be a trip this winter. I'm going to get to some crazy remote beaches, be able to work. I'm like, I am 150 miles from pavement. And I'm, yeah. yeah so how can, where can people come follow you? and um, your business to see the pictures of the beautiful beaches that you're going to be working on on Baja? Uh, well, you, my personal Instagram is J-O-S-I-A-H-Q. And then um, the Journal of Lost Time is all things the Journal of Lost Time on whatever channel you're on. Um, uh, yeah, you can, I mean, the website is thejournalofloststime.com or tjolt.com. That's where, I mean, everything's very like long form. I mean, even when you look at one of our Instagram posts, it's always 10 slides to really kind of get the story and we kind of really encourage the deeper dive into things but um yeah yeah it's pretty much that's it and then uh you join our mailing list you can hear about all the events um follow us instagram journal of lost time yeah that's that's all the spots sweet yeah yeah. awesome thank uh, you so much (laughs) yeah and if i can help ever with anyone looking for anything anywhere Especially places like Baja and the rest, please just hit me up. I'm always down to, I don't like gatekeeping at all. So if I can yeah. help you find a beautiful place to go to, that makes me feel very happy. So uh, feel free to hit me up. Love yeah. it. Thank you so much, Josiah. I really enjoyed having you on the show. And I think that everybody who is listening got something out of it, I hope. Cool. I mean, if, you, if y'all are still here, you made it to the end of the episode, you probably liked it. Go ahead and do the the uh, the like the thumbs up the star rating you know however it is that you're um listening to this and enjoying this conversation if you haven't subscribed go ahead and subscribe follow josiah follow the journal of lost time um if you want to support the show i've got the venmo and the paypal set up i've also got a patreon you know you know the deal all the thingies um but i hope that you guys enjoyed this episode and tune in next time these are not coming out weekly anymore so just next time any old time when it comes (laughs) out um and also there's like 120 odd episodes or something you can listen to so you're not gonna get bored but i will see you guys in the next episode bye